Would it surprise you to learn that in Nuremberg in 1561, an event took place that is literally out of this world? It's strange to think that something like this actually happened, but if eyewitnesses reports are anything to go by, then we have a crazy scenario that took place and the famous cigar-shaped UFOs played a prominent part as the event unfolded in clear view over a city filled with people. Wait, do you hear this? The first disposable newspapers in Germany never came out until the early 1600s. So the closest thing there was to journalism in 1561 came in the form of individual feedback and then publishing a single piece of broadsheet news on a community notice board of such. A guy named Hans Glazier was one of the reporters and he was considered a very reliable source of news by the Nuremberg people. In his depiction of what happened during this event, what we see here is perplexing to say the least, a sky full of strange objects that appear to be having a battle in the sky and even depictions of crash objects with smoke arising. In the description of what was taking place, here it reads when translated. In the morning of April 14th, 1561 at daybreak, between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred on the sun and then this was seen in Nuremberg in the city, before the gates and in the country by many men and women. At first there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood-red semicircular arcs, just like the moon in its last quarter. And the sun above and below and on both sides the color was blood. There stood a round ball of partly dull, partly black ferrous color. Likewise there stood on both sides and as a torus above the sun such blood red ones and other balls in large number about three in a line and four in a square also some alone in between these globes there were visible a few blood red crosses between which there were blood red strips becoming thicker to the rear and in the front malleable like the rods of reed grass which were intermingled among them two big rods one on the right the other on the left and within the small and big rods there were three also four and more globes these all started to fight among themselves so that the globes which were first in the sun flew out to the ones standing on both sides thereafter the globes standing outside the sun in the small and large rods flew into the sun besides the globes flew back and forth among themselves and fought vehemently with each other for over an hour and when the conflict in and again out of the sun was most intense, they became fatigued to such an extent that they all, as said above, fell from the sun down upon the earth as they all burned, and then they wasted away on the earth with immense smoke. After all this, there was something like a black spear, very long and thick, sighted. The shaft pointed to the east, the point pointed west. Whatever such signs mean, God alone knows, although we have seen shortly, one after another, many kinds of signs on the heavens which are sent to us by Almighty God. To bring us to repentance, we still are, unfortunately, so ungrateful that we despise such high signs and miracles of God, or we speak of them with ridicule and discard them to the wind, in order that God may send us a frightening punishment on account of our ungratefulness. After all, the God-fearing will be no means discard these signs, but will take it to heart as a warning of their merciful Father in heaven, will mend their lives and faithfully beg God that he may avert his wrath, including the well-deserved punishment on us, so that we may temporarily here and perpetually there live as his children. For it, may God grant us help. Amen by Hans Glacier, letter painter of Nuremberg. What this appears to be, guys, is the most documented and best recorded incident of unidentified flying objects in history. Hundreds of years ago, the little knowledge we had about stars and planets was more connected with astrology than with science. This was a period in history that was so suppressed under the Holy Roman Empire that people couldn't make any of the connections that we make today and indeed thousands of years ago. Our understanding in this time period was not as expanded as it is today. This event was seen as a message from God rather than an intelligent life form 
operating vehicles in the skies of Europe. Perhaps these flying machines were even via mana, and somewhere on this planet today, there are remnants of these objects still to be found. The Nuremberg event is exceptional in the fact that no one can dismiss this as something born out of someone's imagination because the people of this time period documented what they saw with an unbiased mind. They had never seen anything like it before, and they have inadvertently documented an extraterrestrial event. There is no doubt about it. They couldn't make sense of what took place and simply suggested it must be a message from God. According to author Jason Colavito, the woodcut broadsheet became known in modern culture after being published in a Carl Jung's 1958 book, Flying Saucer, A Modern Myth of Things Seen in the Skies, a book which analyzed the archetypal meaning of UFOs. More recently, the event has been classified as a UFO sighting by many, and even named the UFO battle over Nuremberg by a few enthusiasts. Jung expressed a view that the spectacle was likely a natural phenomenon with religious and military interpretations overlaying it. If the UFOs were living organisms, one would think of a swarm of insects rising with the sun, not to fight one another, but to mate and celebrate the marriage flight. A military interpretation would view the tubes as cannons and the spheres as cannonballs, emphasize the black spearhead at the bottom of the scene as Glacier's own testimony that the globes fought vehemently until exhausted. A religious view would emphasize the crosses. Jung thinks the images of the four globes coupled by lines suggested cross marriage coordinaries and forms the model of the primitive cross cousin marriage. It could be an individuation symbol. The association of sunrise suggests the revelation of the light. Otto Billing made an effort to provide a historical context for the apparition in his comments. He notes Nuremberg was one of the most prestigious cities of the late Middle Ages, a free and imperial city known for its wealth and nobility. It tried to maintain neutrality during the furious warring between Catholics and Protestants during the Reformation. But when one Protestant prince was rebuffed when he insisted on financial tributes to fund his battles, the city was besieged and its trade cut off. Though ultimately successful in defending itself, the rebuilding of fortifications in Nuremberg necessitated a new round of taxation, and the city suffered hard times in its aftermath. On Good Friday 1554, another siege happened, and one broadsheet publisher described mock sons that prognosticated God's will wanted confession of sinful ways. Curiously, the Nuremberg event is not isolated. In Basile, Switzerland in 1566 at dawn, many citizens were frightened when they witnessed black spheres involved in a formidable aerial battle for several hours. There was little doubt that the skies above their city had been invaded. The city's gazette recorded, At the time when the sun rose, one saw many large black balls which moved at high speed in the air towards the sun, then made half turns, banging one against the other as if they were fighting a battle out of combat. A great number of them became red and igneous. Thereafter, they were consumed and died out. It should be pointed out that these descriptions and woodcuts are attempts by artists nearly 500 years ago to depict an event that they potentially could not comprehend. Some have pointed out that the woodcuts and descriptions of the events sound very much like a modern day dogfight between planes of opposing forces. The black circles in the woodcut look very similar to explosions in the sky as photographed by World War II reporters. In addition, the cross-shaped vehicles look very similar to the profile of a World War II fighter ascending into a steep climb. As such, some have proposed that the events witnessed were actually old World War II battles and that some sort of slip in space-time allowed the 16th century town to witness an event that would not occur for another 400 years. Could these events really be a result of a time slip and what the residents were actually witnessing was actual wartime Europe? The truth may be stranger than we could ever have imagined, guys. What do you make of these very well-documented events? Comments below, and thank you for watching.